Hello and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun, where the sight of a man having a massive slash on an area of great natural beauty can mean only one thing. We're in Hideo Kojima land. Specifically, we're in Death Stranding, the brilliantly odd delivery man simulator from Kojima Productions. It came out on PS4 last year and hits PC today on Steam and on the Epic Game Store. And our very own Matthew Castle is here to unzip and let his opinions on the game and its PC port flow free. So, Matthew, why are you peeing from a mountaintop? Why not? That's it. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> why not? Why the hell not? I can do what I like. I'm in charge. You can. You are. You're an adult man. You can do whatever you I'm bloody will, man. please. I can pee where mm -hmm. I goddamn like. Um, mm -hmm. No, I'm peeing because I drank uh, too much Monster Energy drink. Of course. You unleashed the beast. Uh, in in many ways. And, and drinking energy drinks is one of the many strange things you can do in Death Stranding. This is a game all about the minutia of everyday life, specifically the everyday life of a delivery man. Lest we forget, Hideo Kojima is the guy, after all, who gave us the ice cubes melting in real time in Metal Gear Solid mm. 2. Our weeing friend is Sam Porter Bridges, played by Norman Reedus, and for various story reasons, which I won't spoil here, which is code word for I didn't really understand them, uh, <laughs> is trying to connect uh, the, the United States following a post-apocalyptic scenario. Uh, everyone now lives in these subterranean communities called Not Cities, and there are a handful of couriers who venture out into the dangerous natural world to deliver packages. That mundanity, Matthew, it sounds like the perfect game for this age we're living in, this lockdown. Yeah, it's weird. Like, the kind of message and the idea of the game has never seemed more relevant. You know, you almost wonder if all of this is just a, a big Kojima PR stunt. I mean, if it is, I kind of take my hat off to him, but I also say, I'm afraid you have to go to jail. Cullum, have you actually played this yourself? I did. I played it on PS4 when it first came out last year, and I quite enjoyed it, but there was definitely a point where I felt like I had delivered enough packages, and I felt like the United Cities of America, I felt like it was connected enough, and that was it for me. There was just only so much hiking I could do. People throw around the term walking simulator, but what this is is actually a proper walking simulator. It's a game that is primarily interested in the act of a man traversing a natural landscape and having to deal with things like balance, the weight of his rucksack, which is obviously the parcels he's carrying, about which routes to take through the terrain so you can scan things to see how steep it is, you can spot uh, pieces of mud where you might slip, you have to watch out for wind because that can push you back and blow packages from your back. It makes you think about decisions which you kind of ignore in most games. You know, we're mm -hmm. used to people who have infinite pockets that are just full of junk. But here, like, everything is accounted for and it, it actually makes you think about the realities of being a, a dumb video game character who carries loads of shit. Yeah, and it kind of evolves as it goes on, doesn't it? As you go to different outposts, you meet the different kind of characters that run each one. Most of them have a technology that they're responsible for, and by doing side missions, you kind of improve your relationship and you get better versions. So actually, quite quickly, you do find yourself kind of leveling up and, and, and gaining a much bigger set of equipment. So you've got things like uh, little kind of hovering sleds that you can pull. So you can basically put all your packages on that instead of having them on your back. So it's kind of a safer way to transport. You can chain those together. Uh, you gradually get vehicles, you get bikes and trucks, which obviously massively change your relationship with your job because now you're mm -hmm zipping uh, parcels across on a motorbike or you're packing loads of stuff into a truck like some of the jobs are just beyond what a man can handle and I really like that sense of this character changing you know I think more so than games with skill trees and arbitrary stat increases mm -hmm. like the character I was 30 40 hours in was very very different in terms of what he could do and his relationship with his task there's something about doing a job very thoroughly, very well, that I really enjoy. And a lot of games don't really tap into that. You know, I guess some simulators do. You know, this probably has more in common with like a Euro truck simulator in a way than it does like, say, Assassin's Creed or Far Cry or whatever. Totally, and it is 
like when you mentioned being a delivery driver, like speaking from experience in a previous life, that's what I was. So I could relate to Sam Bridges on a, another level. Do you mean in a previous life, like you have like a ghostly ancestor inside you, or do you mean before you did this job? No, I have a ghostly ancestor inside. Oh of me. my god! Mm. What's his name? Mark. Great. Oh, that was a, that was a good bit. <laughs> But apart from living out my post fantasies again in Death Stranding, one of my favorite things in the game was that I could turn my peas and poos into projectiles. I was yes. a big fan of that. The action, because it it isn't all stealth, Matthew. Like there is some action, isn't there? There are two big threats in the world, predominantly other delivery people. I like the idea of yeah, a DHL man and an interlink, you know, kind of like West Side Story with each other. That is very much how it works. In this case, uh, they're called mules, and they're basically delivery men who are so obsessed with delivering packages that they've gone mad and basically formed a cult based on killing other delivery men and taking their packages it's just so they can get, like, the adrenaline hit of delivering their parcels for them. It's basically like Postman Pat meets Mad Max. The actual human stealth, by Kojima standards, is pretty basic. You can hide in grass, you can scam people, you can dodge them. Most of the time, it's about avoiding people. Later on, you get some non-lethal weapons, which are so powerful, you can just shoot these uh, sort of rope ties at people that kind of swivel around them and knock them out. And I don't think I ever actually died to a human enemy. The much bigger threat is uh, the kind of ghosts, the BTs, which are beached things. Again, I can't explain that. You sometimes enter an area and it turns out it's haunted or invaded by these ghosts, and then your job is basically to creep through. Uh, you can't really fight them apart from throwing grenades made of your bodily fluids at them. You have a baby attached to you that hints at where they are, it cries when they're nearby and helps you sense them. It's more of a super tense, like hold your breath I mean you literally have to hold your breath to stop them from hearing you if you get too close to them if they do catch you they sort of drag you into these like mini boss encounters which actually I found was a quicker way of getting rid of them often like you just chuck a few grenades mm. at the boss he dies and then the whole encounter's over the action's pretty easy in this game like it's it, it, it really doesn't want to get in the way of, of the hiking stuff there are also a couple of boss fights throughout I actually thought these were quite disappointed by Kojima's standards considering that he's given us probably like the end you know, from Metal Gear Solid well, 3 well I mean every one of his games has like a handful of like definitive boss fights this is a lot simpler in that regard before we went into this video you were telling me that this was one of the best open world games you've played in years which is a ludicrously bold claim so <laughs> please the floor is yours so many open world games they're not actually about the world they're about a series of tiny activities dotted across you know they are the ubisoft model you are <laughs> yeah. cleaning icons from a map here there are icons on a map and they are the the kind of various outposts you're moving between but the game is it's about travel it is about the journey and not in a sentimental like you know Ooh, it was all about the journey along the way man this is about your kind of connection with those environments it's about learning a world in the same way that you do in real life you know you learn shortcuts you learn places you don't want to go you know you end up doing the same thing over and over again and it doesn't feel repetitive, it just feels sensible. You're like, well, I know if I want to go from here to here, this is my favoured route because it avoids the mules. I don't get involved with those BTs on the hill. Did you find that thrilling then? When, like, Because when you say, you, you, when you call it sensible. I was paying attention to everything. I would look at the stretch in front of me and I would think, shall I lay some ladders and try and cross here? Do I try and climb up those cliff faces over there? I was actually connected with the landscape in a way that you rarely are. I, it, I, has similarities with Zelda Breath of the Wild which was just about largely about moving around that world and there it was helped with the, the fact you could just climb anything you know that was incredibly freeing here you can also climb a lot of stuff but you have these extra gadgets as well but it, it, it kind of taps into a fellow a, a very similar vibe and if like me you are sick of just basically worlds becoming defunct as you play them. This isn't that. This isn't a world where once you've ticked off the five side missions, you'll never ever do that region again. Through all that, I, you know, I feel like I know this place better than a lot of other game worlds I've been in recently. And some of that is also related to 
the kind of online elements. Yeah, that's true, because you're not technically alone in this world, are you? Yeah, so it's asynchronous online multiplayer, which basically means all the worlds are linked. You're playing in your world, everyone else is playing in their world, but you are working towards a common goal. It basically pitches that your fellow players are also these delivery men, and they are building things in their world as you can build things in your world. So you can place down ladders, like I said, across rivers, ladders to get up cliffs. You can build bigger things, bridges to get across canyons. Those elements bleed into your world. A bit like the Dark Souls messages, yes, except yeah. instead of someone writing a message trying to make you fall off a cliff to your death, this is someone has built a bridge, has invested their resources, and there is something brilliant about going on a long journey and you're really struggling and then discovering that someone was there before you and they've done something to kind of help you. I spent a very long time building this zip line over a mountain and every time I came back into the game the zip line would have likes uh, from other people who were basically thanking me for building it and so it became this not this meta game of trying to build things that I thought other people would like but building things that I thought would help me and then finding out that yes like other people agreed the open world map evolves massively because of that. A huge motorway can be built, a communal motorway. It's incredibly expensive to build, so it really does take the community. But once it's built, it changes everything because you can basically drive a motorbike from like A to B. And, you know, the flow of the game changes. And when I came back into the game and saw that like a huge stretch of it had been completed, it was just this sense of like, we did it, you know, everyone did it, mm. we all gathered together, and that is what the game is about. And it's, you know, in its story, you know, it's about connecting the United States, rebuilding this country. And I actually genuinely felt it in in the mechanics, which is so rare. Yeah, like, I, I'm not, it didn't move me, you know, like, I didn't weep over a fucking motorway, I'm not insane. <laughs> um, but... Like, I really, really appreciated it. That's really lovely, Matthew. It almost brings a tear to my eye, to be honest oh, with you, good. you know? So really, like, humanity is okay sometimes. I'm going to I'm gonna play some footage of uh, him pissing in a river while you're saying this to really undermine what you're saying. <laughs> please, please do. Um, and please tell me what this is like on PC, because we're talking about it in a wider way, just about Death yeah. Stranding, but... What is this like on the personal computer? It plays beautifully on PC. This is actually the first outing of the Decima engine, which is made by Guerrilla Games. They made it for Horizon, or they used it in Horizon Zero Dawn, and then famously gave the uh, engine to Kojima Productions as well. This is a great showcase for the engine on PC. It looked great on PS4, but here the bump in frame rate, you know, I was just playing at 60 frames per second, but you can push it all the way up to 240. And it's a game that benefits from that smoothness as well. They've done a lot of motion capture of actors, so in the cutscenes, there's a lot of kind of nuance, a lot of detail that just looks a lot more satisfying when it's kind of playing out smooth you can really appreciate the level of detail and because it has got this simulated element and is about you know the act of physically moving through this landscape having a game which is more responsive and reactive is really really important so the smoothness there really really helps um just feels a lot nicer to play here than it did on on ps4 yeah here i was just constantly wowed by it constantly taking pictures as a in-game photography mode it's also on ps4 but here you can see everything in 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 that much more detail um it does support ultra wide screens i don't actually have one myself so i haven't tested that our hardware editor Catherine took a look at it and was really impressed with it i'll put a link to her thoughts down in the description so you can get more of a sort of precise figures and obviously the pc port has a head crab, doesn't it, Matthew? It does. It has like a little time with Valve. You get these side missions in your email and you basically get sent to go and find companion cubes for a series of mysterious characters. And if you bring them back to the bases, uh, you unlock uh, kind of Half Life and Portal cosmetics, um, which are just cute little extras. It's, it's nothing too substantial. If you want to see Norman Reedus in a pair of Gordon Freeman glasses. And who doesn't? It's a, it's a cute little extra. It, it, it doesn't radically change it. If you already own this and played this on PS4, it's, it's, it's not like you're discovering a whole new world or anything. But the big question, Matthew, what it all comes down to yeah. 
Is Death Stranding total bullshit? It is a little bit. <laughs> For everything I've said, I'll tell you the thing about Death Stranding is it does not put its best foot forward. At the start, it dumps two hours of tutorial and exposition on you, which really missells the game. Mm -hmm. You know, it puts the lore of the world, which, like I've said, is very, very confusing. It's basically 90% acronym and. I couldn't really unpick a lot of it now. But once you push through that and you just get into the task of doing the delivery, improving your character, forming that connection with the world, that's where the magic kicks in. Also, the story does get better. It's got this weird structure where it does throws... Does this? It does. Well, it, 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 <laughs> okay. throws, it throws lots of stuff at you that you don't really understand. And then you spend quite a bit of time with each character and you at least get to understand like the cast of characters with, with so, so, such luminaries like die hardman and fragile it's very delicate mm. uh mama uh, mm. and Guillermo del toro obviously yeah there's still a lot of nonsense but i found it less irritating as i went on but i would say that whatever you feel about kojima every once in a while he does pull off stuff which i think you can only really achieve if you kind of have that insane vision when you're when you are really stressed and you cross a hill and then the camera pulls out and it starts playing some weird indie song Like, that's something, you know, you may roll your eyes at it, but you remember it. My big sort of feeling of this game is that, like, love it or hate it, there is at least something here to react to. A lot of games, they just aren't. They're just nothing, you know? They just come and go and, and, and there's nothing. They're totally inoffensive. And here, at least swings for something. And it happens to be something I, I really enjoyed and kind of connected with, and, and so I'm very appreciative of that. But I also understand that there are people who hate this in a big way, and that's absolutely fine, you know, for all that it is a game about rebuilding a shattered world, it's also a game about throwing grenades made out of your own piss. Swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Mm, it is indeed. So thank you very much, Matthew, for making that impassioned case for Death Stranding on PC. It sounds like a, a weirdly perfect game for our current times, in that I too have taken to whizzing in the sea. Oh, it takes a big man to admit it. Uh, also, I'm calling Brighton Police. When you gotta go, you gotta go, Matthew. I'm sure they would understand. Now this game, it's quite hard to fit into a nutshell, so if you have any questions about the action itself or the PC port, do chuck them in the comments for Matthew to answer. And even though this video isn't quite as helpful as a stretch of motorway, we'd appreciate you giving this a like. And while you're here, why not watch our recent breakdowns of Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Watch Dogs Legion, two much more traditional open worlds, but we still had fun with them. And don't forget to hit subscribe and then ring that bell so you'll be notified of all future RPS videos. Thank you very much for watching, we hope to see you again soon. Bye! <laughs> bye.